I know, okay, this is so weird, right? I don't want to be a weirdo, but sometimes it's hard. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not to say this correctly, but I'm so grateful that I was diagnosed with depression. Um, the, the, honestly, the best thing about being diagnosed with depression and understanding those lows was, was understanding when I was about to go back into that. Um, I am now cognizant of like, hey, okay, have I been e eating? Am I trying to isolate? Um, what am I, am I going back into that mode? And I can notice when I'm starting to go back into the depression because it's easy to slide back into it, especially if you've like missed a few doses or something else stressful happens in your life. And um, I, I'm, a, I'm glad that I have that indication of that something is wrong and this is not OK, because if I had that before, I probably wouldn't have waited so long to um, seek help. But, you know, that's just life. This is the My Sister Said podcast, and I'm your host, Uche Amaneke. If you know me from my YouTube channel, you know that I'm all about that active faith life. But I also know trusting God with your Sunday through Saturday and your eternity, it takes practice. So in this podcast, I am diving deeper. We are going to be talking about everything from spiritual abuse to a biblical view on twerking. Yes. Our faith is not just religion, it's real life. This is what community looks like, people. Hello, that's Uche. Welcome to a little podcast. If you see me looking down, if you're watching my YouTube channel, um, I am painting my nails. <laughs> it calms me, I don't know. I usually get so nervous when I'm filming. Can't open it. Okay, so I've opened it. All right, so, Zoom. I was um, talking to one of my girlfriends at this party. It was like a small baby birthday party. And um, I was just talking about how, like, you know, I take an antidepressants and I'm like, oh, man, I've, you know, dealing with my ADHD and stuff. We're just having a conversation. And I was just like, blah, blah, blah. And she was just like, wow, you're so open with, you know, talking about your, you know, depression and stuff. I was like, yeah, well, I mean, I'd rather not have it, but, you know, it's fact of life. And plus, I have ADHD and have, um, a little bit of trouble controlling what I say. And so, plus I'm also an open person, but like just being open, being myself, I've learned there are a lot more pe people on antidepressants and anxiety medication and uh, medication in general, honestly, than people realize. Um, and, and I'm not gonna pretend like I was like so woke about this and so like aware of mental health and stuff. I wasn't, um, but but I've also learned that like, if people aren't talking about it, then no one's talking about it. And that means people are not having, you know, ha being supported and, you know, I don't want anybody to jump into something and have all these fears about it jumping into it. So I'm just gonna talk about some of the first things that I wish I had known before I had, um, before I'd taken antidepressant medication. So I'm gonna unpack some of those fears that I had personally and, and then kind of let you know just kind of let you know what changed my mind and let me go forward and now end up in a place where I'm literally so happy that I did say yes to taking medication and um, grateful that God created this medication. And also if I had like a freaking t-shirt gun and I full with my antidepressant medications, I would just like shoot it out to everyone who needs it and just be like, everyone take it. You know, um, that's, that's me. That's not me diagnosing anybody or advocating for medicating people, but just like anyone who need it, I would wanted them to have it because it's just such a game changer for me. Um, did I already say my name? My name's Uche. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> so we're just going to talk about this. Before I was actually um, diagnosed with depression, I was diagnosed in 2000 and technically 2018, but I wanted to count that as true. Okay. Tech, I was diagnosed officially in um, 2020. I thought for the longest that there was not a stigma with antidepressants or antidepressant medication or mental health, whatever, until I was diagnosed. I was like, there is a hella stigma about having depression, being diagnosed with depression, and people knowing that you're on medication for mental health issues and um, or you have mental illness. That's what it is. And so, so one of the fears that I had that kept me from even wanting to pursue to take medication was I didn't want to be thought of as crazy. I didn't want to be thought I was, I literally just thought of being depressed as being crazy, like, or something, something's wrong with you. And it's like, I'm like, girl, Uche, something is wrong with you. You, you cried. 
like for no reason you don't sleep everyone so you can see that you're losing weight like and i have no weight to lose so it was pretty obvious and so it's just like something is wrong right <laughs> and i know i had i know i became aware of the stigma because i was like because technically i was diagnosed twice right um my my psychiatrist diagnosed me <laughs> sorry and like diagnosed me first and she was just like okay here um uche like she did a little test on me like a verbal exam talking about what I was going through and she um talking about my history and stuff and knowing that I have ADHD and people with ADHD and OCD they're more prone to having anxiety and then depression can result from that just constant anxiety but anyway so she so I was like okay Uche I'm gonna diagnose you with kind of a mild a mild form of depression um and I was like what and I was so sad and I was like I was like no <laughs> I was like no she was like what and I was like no I don't think so um I think like I just need to exercise I'm just worried about this you know I'm just kind of sad and worried about this money situation because I just lost my job well I had lost my job a couple months before that and I was just like I don't know like you know I don't think I'm depressed I'm pretty sure I'm not it's just I'm not I'm pretty sure I'm not it's just a hard time in my life just you know she's like and she was a nice there. She's a nice psychiatrist. So she was like, okay, Uche, um, okay. She told me that she could not increase my dosage for my um, ADHD medication because my ADHD medication stopped working. Um, and I learned from her, from my psychiatrist, that if you're taking ADHD medication and you're, you know, you're, you have a chemical imbalance somewhere else, your meds are not going to work. Same thing I found out on my period. <laughs> that shit does not work when I'm on period. So that's fun. And so she was like, I'm not going to increase your dose. And I was just like, okay, whatever. I was like, okay, well, let me just try to work out and let me just try to get myself better. Like maybe I can figure out this whole mess financial situation and it'll be great. Right. So that was my plan after I left her office after that first diagnosis. So I left her office that day and <laughs> that day and I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to start working out and I'm going to just get my life together. I'm going to get this finance and stuff taken care of. I'm going to get a new job. It'll be great. Right. Great, great, great. And, um, so yeah, I mean, my finances got figured out and it was great. I came back a month later for our check-in. And, and so I sat down, I was kind of cracking jokes and, you know, being more lively than I was before because I wasn't as sad. Um, I felt less stressed about like my job situation, my money situation. And I was like, okay, I was like, yeah, all right. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm going to go into their the office. And mm -hmm. I sat down, we talked and she was like, okay. She's like, okay, so I still believe that you have mild depression. And I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? And I was just like, I just started, ball I just started bawling my eyes out, just crying so hard. I was like, no, no. And I was like, yeah, there's a stigma. <laughs> there's a stigma, first of all. Second of all, she was like, she was like, hey, Uche. I was like, she was like, you see that? I was like, what? She was like, I'm pretty sure bef before, even a year before this, you didn't just break down whenever you got bad news, right? And I was like, no. You know, and so, yeah, that sucked. But anyways, this was one of the first things that I wish I had known before I had, um, before I taken antidepressant medication was to have a psychiatrist who's willing to listen and explain their reasoning for doing something. Before I had my current psychiatrist, I had another guy. He didn't explain anything. The way that I was quote unquote diagnosed and, um, he wanted to prescribe me medication. He was like, well, he's like, ah, it feels like you're having a hard time. You want to get on some depression medication? Let's wish, let's put you on some depression medication. Hmm? And I was like, no. And so, but luckily I got a new psychiatrist that was willing to explain to me why. And then also she did a formal exam on me and it's a formal exam and not just being like, oh, everything sounds bad. Maybe you should get some medication. It's like, no, no weirdo. You want to have a psychiatrist that's willing to answer your questions and before you even asked them, because I didn't had no idea what to ask. Luckily, she explained it to me. Um, so one of the fears that I had was that I was afraid that the medication was going to change me. I didn't know what antidepressant medication did to a person. I wanted to feel my feelings. I, I feel everything. And I'm just so used to that. Um, I didn't want to be numb. I didn't want to be always like happy all the time. You know, I'm pretty much a positive person. I just but I didn't want to be happy all the time. I didn't want to. Um, to just feel off, just feel nothing. I didn't want to be happy for no reason. And 
luckily, I mean, I told my psychiatrist that she's like, no, what we're getting to is for you, for these small things not to affect you as much because your chemical imbalance is like you're overreacting. You're very irritable. You get really sad easily. And that's not something that was common to you. And I was like, no, it's not. I usually don't care about anything. I'm not able to really, uh, whatever. And so she was like, we want to get you a point, not to where you're numb, but to where you're, you're not like as easily affected, um, kind of back, get you back in balance. Okay. So the fray that was going to change me, um, and that's one of the things that, you know, held me off. And so, and then my, another fear that I had was, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on this forever. I'm going to be on this forever. So when I was in the office and I asked my psychiatrist, I was like, okay, so how long am I going to, how long am I going to be on this medication? She's like, we're going to do it for about, we, we can do maybe eight months to a year. And that, to me, that sounded like forever, forever. And and I was like kind of upset. I was like, I don't want to be, first of all, putting drugs into my body for that long, right? I don't want to be putting something into my body for that long. And that kind of freaked me out a little bit. But then what she told me, she was like, well, we don't want to, we, we don't want this to be drastic. We want to you for you to take the medication and to get you stabilized where you can feel better. But that, we we're going to do that. That only happens over time. She was like, you know, we don't want to rush this. We don't want you to go up and down in your emotions. We want you to stay steady and get your brain used to um, that. And then we'll taper off. And, and I was like, okay. And she's like, well, that just takes a while, but we, but we want to do it correctly. So that's what I was scared of. But um, whenever I was talking to one of my girlfriends, my community, she was like, yeah, I was on depress antidepressants for two years. And, but I was, I did it correctly. Um, and I was just, I was just scared. I was just really scared and uncomfortable. Cause like it just, I didn't want to be broken for that long. That seems like a long time for me to be on medication. And that means that something is really wrong with me. Like I was like, man, something's really, really wrong with me. And um, I'll tell you this. One of the things that really kind of changed my mind about this attitude was, of course, what my doctor said about, you know, taking things slowly. But one of the big things that really got me changed was Instagram. I was post on Instagram. It was really good. So the post read. My therapist told me something meaningful yesterday. She said, It's important to remember that when you're depressed, you have to nurse yourself and be extra gentle towards yourself. Just like an athlete wouldn't break an ankle, then force themselves to run on that ankle. They rest as it heals and do not think, I'm a failed athlete. They think, Right now, something isn't working, so I'll take care of myself until it does. Just like a broken bone, Depression can change the way your daily life plays out. And pushing yourself too hard and getting frustrated when you don't feel better is just like trying to run on a broken ankle and getting frustrated that it doesn't heal. In the end, it says, read this, then read it again, then save it and read it over and over again when you're depressed. Your brain's kind of broken, and <laughs> it, is that, it is that broken that you need to take this time. That's the time it takes to heal your brain, to start healing you know, for me, at least I know it takes longer for some others, but, um, or shorter for some others, but that's the time it takes for you to heal. It might take shorter, might take longer, who knows? We'll see. Right. But we have to start. And so I really like that example of just like, pfft, how would you take care of a broken bone? Um, and then I guess one of the other things I was, I didn't know was I didn't know what it was going to look like for me to get back to normal. Like what does normal look like after medication? Like, how will I know She's like, I want to get you back stable and back to normal and back to your norms. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't really remember. And one of the things that helped me was like, okay, I knew my appetite. When my appetite returned, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Because I had no appetite before. And so when that was returning, I was like, ah, I made myself food. Or when I'd wake up in the morning and I got out of bed to brush my teeth. When I got it, when I felt like getting ready in the morning, or when I looked, just looking forward to something was a really big deal for me just healing from my depression. Um, and so it's like, it's going to be different. What, what it looks like to get back to normal, quote unquote, is going to be look, look different for everybody. Sometimes you might just have an inkling of, you know, you laugh at jokes more. So I might notice, hey, you know, are you like, you're looking right? You like, you're looking better. Or you just look forward to a TV show that you had just kind of put away or you want to read now or you want to go on walks now. And um, or just, you'll know. I think you'll see the things that you you're like oh um 
one of my other doubts was like, I just didn't think normal people, normal people, quote unquote, don't take medication, depression medication. Y'all, well, let me tell you <laughs> what helped me with that was like, I realized there are so many people taking antidepressants, so many people taking anti um, anti-anxiety medication, so many people struggling with this stuff than you even know. Also, one of the things that she shared, my psychiatrist shared with me is that there's more than one type of depression. There's like, um, there's, there's actually like seven types, I think. And, um, even the depression that I have, it's, um, there's like mild, um, what is it? Mild, severe or something. Yeah. So there's mild, moderate, severe, um, and severe is also called major. So mild depression, moderate depression, severe depression, those are the levels. And so, um, there's other, other, also other types too. PMDD, um, bipolar disorder, um, seasonal depression. That's, that's also a type of depression. So yeah. Um, but yeah, there's so many people that are having it and that you don't know about it because people, because there's, there is a stigma. People do not want to talk about it. They don't want to be associated with that being part of their story. And it's kind of harmful because it's like, people are like, oh, I'm keeping it all together. You got chemical help, you know, we all need help and that's okay. Like, you know, especially in this. And then, um, yeah, I just didn't want depression to be a part of my story. I was like, oh God, I was depressed. Like it's nothing, it's okay to be sad, but depressed, no, mm -mm, no. Um, and honestly, like I kind of like, I wish I would have ignored some of the commercials that I'd seen. Um, the whole like, like those depression commercials with someone like, you know, sad face, like, mom, I'm so sad. I'm so sad all the time. It's like, um, that's not everybody. Everyone can present with depression different. Uh, mine was like eating, I'm not, e not eating, no appetite, and then drinking, like, or just depending on substances to help me sleep because I could not sleep at all. I would just, I would try to go to sleep, but I'd need to drink something in order to try to get to sleep. And then I'd be up in the middle of the night, literally, just like 2, 2 a.m., just like sitting there awake for no reason. And then um, there's also like the emotional, being emotional and just like, just not want to do anything. So it sucked. But, um, but yeah. And then I guess the last thing, like just as a Christian, I was just scared that I was not depending on God enough, like just to turn directly to medication and I'm like, well, I'm not praying enough. Maybe I'm just not praying enough. Maybe I just don't have faith in God that he's going to fix what's wrong in my life. I was just like, man, I must not be depending on God enough. And that's not true. This world would be broken if you depended on God, like either, even if you depend on God through and through, it's scroll would still be broken and people would still die. People would still get hurt. That's what it is. Um, our bodies, this world is imperfect. People have disorders out the yin yang, you know, like I have ADHD. I'm gonna pray that away. Like, I mean, I can, I believe that God, if you wanted to take away my ADHD, God can. That's completely, um, that's completely possible. I wake up tomorrow, I'm be fine. Um, but I have this right now, this order right now, and I need to take care of it while I have it so that I can be useful. Um, and then also asking my doctor, what are things that you can faithfully do? Cause I never wanted to be just dependent on medication. Like, what can I do? Is it exercise? Is it eating better? Like what would help this process so that I just don't depend on this medication, but I can actively, you know, have a part in, you know, helping my mental health and one of the things that's helped me a lot is just talking about it, understanding that something's wrong right now and something's wrong now. God does not want that to keep happening. And that that's such a blessing that we have a medication available. So, but yeah, that's all I got for you today. Thank you as much. You're amazing. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.